Hello, this is Dr. David Green with R3 Stem Cell. The topic today is stem cell therapy for degenerative disc disease. Degenerative disc disease is a potentially disabling problem. Over 90% of individuals will experience back pain at some point in life. Thankfully, over 90% of those get better without any sort of treatment within about six to 12 weeks. It's well known that 40% of back pain comes from a problem in the disc, and it may be an intermittent pain or it may be chronic daily disabling pain. It can be very frustrating, um, and the question is why? And the answer is that we just don't have very good pain treatments for, uh, that have been shown traditionally to help there's really no go-to standard. We have quite a few things that uh, are utilized, but they don't always work, and that's been very frustrating for clinicians and patients. The normal interver intervertebral disc is composed of 80% water, 20% proteins, and collagen. It's an amazing shock absorber. Every time we walk or run, the disc um, absorbs the shock by pushing out a lot of water and then reabsorbing it. It has a terrible blood supply though, so it does not heal very well. Very slow metabolism. There's no nerve endings in the middle, in this area here, which is called the nucleus pulposus. No sensation at all. This area, which is a harder material, called the annulus fibrosus, does have nerve endings and it can feel pain. The analogy is that of a jelly donut with a tougher outer covering, and that's the annulus. So how does degenerative disc disease occur? Well, essentially what happens is, as we age, you start to lose some of the water content in the disc, sort of like a prune. You start to lose height in the disc, and pain may occur from resulting tears and cracks in the outer part, which is the annulus. Uh, as mentioned, 40% of the time, the intervertebral disc is the cause of low back pain, and it can lead to inflammation and irritation of the adjacent nerve roots. So in addition to back pain, a person can also end up with sciatica. A lot of people with degenerative disc disease don't even know it. They're not symptomatic. So if you've got MRIs of people who are, have no back pain between the ages of 20 and 50, about 35% of them would show something like this. You have white, 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 and then a dark disc, which is degenerative, and then another one that looks fine. So this person may have no back pain whatsoever, or it could be daily disabling pain. Traditional treatment options include over-the-counter medications or topical medications, and then for really, really bad pain or acute exacerbations, narcotics may be helpful. Muscle relaxers along with physical therapy, chiropractic treatment, TENS units, spinal decompression therapy like you see here, which is intermittent traction, acupuncture, and interventional treatment options include trigger point injections, injections inside the disc, or facet treatments such as medial branch blocks, facet injections, or radiofrequency ablation can be very helpful if the pain is coming from the disc and also from the joints behind uh, the spine. Epidural injections can help if adjacent nerve roots are being irritated. IDET is intradiscal electrothermal treatment, rarely used anymore because insurance companies won't reimburse for it because studies showed it didn't work as well as we thought. And then mild is minimally invasive lumbar decompression, which can be very helpful uh, for relieving pain. Is there a better way to avoid surgery? And surgery for degenerative disc disease either is a fusion, where you weld the bones together after taking out the symptomatic disc, or an artificial disc replacement. Those have been around for about the last 10 years and really have not been shown to be superior to a spinal fusion. So the question is, is there something we can do to avoid this? I mean, the results of surgery oftentimes are like a roll of the dice. Well, welcome to regenerative medicine. There's no more band-aids with regenerative medicine, which is what traditional treatments have been. We actually have the potential to heal degenerative disc disease tissue, achieve pain relief, and to reverse the problem. But just remember, the metabolism of the disc is very, very slow. It just doesn't have a very good healing potential and no, no blood supply. So there are four 
I'm sorry, three main options that we're going to talk about today, PRP therapy, bone marrow derived stem cell treatment, amniotic derived stem cell treatment. None of these involve culturing of your uh, stem cells. There's minimal risk. There's no tumor involvement. None of these involve embryonic stem cells, okay? And there's no ethical concerns with these treatments. PRP therapy is known as platelet-rich plasma therapy. It does not directly contain stem cells, okay? You, when you put those into the disc, it actually calls them in from the body. Um, it involves a simple blood draw, um, such as you see here, okay? So the blood is collected from your arm, 30 to 60 cc's. The platelets are separated out by a very quick spinning called centrifuging for about 10 to 15 minutes. And the middle layer that results is the platelet-rich plasma. So you have all these 60 cc's and you end up with about five. That's what you want. And then that's injected into wherever, shoulder or whatnot. We're talking about the disc today, but it's used all over the body. Okay. Now, there was a study looking at 12 patients followed for one year for uh, PRP injections into the disc. Um, and they had amazing results. So we do have, I guess you'd call it a pilot study which is not a real statistically significant study, but so far so good. Bone marrow derived stem cell treatment involves taking uh, bone marrow from a person's hip, the iliac crest, it's a minor procedure, and immediately it's processed to concentrate the stem cells and growth factors. It's not shipped off and cultured. Um, in the US, you can't do that. So it's injected into the disc in the same setting, okay? An article in Transplantation in 2011 looked at this, and the patients achieved rapid pain relief and functional improvement, and outcomes compared favorably with the results of other procedures, such as spinal fusion and total disc replacement. All right, so a pilot study there showed excellent results. Amniotic-derived stem cell injections are the latest treatment available. It's truly cutting edge. The material comes from scheduled C-section donors. Otherwise, the material just gets thrown away. There's no fetal sacrifice, there's no embryonic stem cells, the tissue goes to an FDA regulated lab, and it's highly concentrated to include stem cells, growth factors, hyaluronic acid, anti-inflammatory meters, mediators, and there's no steroid involved. So the conclusion is that there have been small studies to date with these stem cell procedure materials that have been extremely encouraging and shown that it's safe. All right. It, Degenerative disc disease is very frustrating for both patient and clinician. Um, and surgical outcomes are similar oftentimes to a roll of the dice. R3 stem cell works with centers of excellence nationwide, offering stem cell procedures for degenerative disc disease, arthritis, ligament injury, tendonitis, and more. Visit us today online at r3stemcell.com or simply call us to find a center near you at 844-GET-STEM. I'm Dr. David Green with R3 Stem Cell. Thank you very much for watching today.